We're gonna do Domeki Riggin Moping 2.0. A few years ago, we actually did a pretty good piece um, with largemouths down in Florida. Today, we are in my neck of the woods. We're up in, in uh, Shield Country, Northwest Ontario, and we're on the hunt for the big um, minnow eater smallmouths. And, you know, just gonna sort of show you how we utilize Mega Live now to be a little bit more efficient in, in finding and seeing the fish, triggering them to bite. And, but now with the forward sonar, we can see them out in front of us, and it's a lot more about presenting the baits to the fish, um, you know, before they know you're there or before you get on top of them. Beautiful day in sunset country here. Let's go see what we can catch. I'm gonna show you a couple quick tricks on rigging up these um, Elaztec baits on, on a jig head. Um, my, my program today, I'm gonna run a five inch um, scented jerk shad. On a, on a 3 8 smelt nader head with a 3 aught hook in it, a little bit bigger hook for the 5 inch. And then I've also got a 3 8 with a 2 aught uh, that I'm gonna put a 4 inch bait on. And that's, you know, just give them a couple options. I sometimes like the 4 inch for when I get on top of fish for fishing vertically, but I like the 5 for casting and just a little bigger profile, a little bit easier for the fish to see. And, you know, usually that's the deal is just try and get them to, to catch it and see it. And uh, this is a new color we got. Gussie's Blue Glimmer, pretty pumped. Pearl with a little bit of a blue hue to it. And in a lot of the tannic water that we have up here in the north, uh, the water's clear, but it's not zebra mussel clear. This sort of blue pearl color really glows and, and looks good. So um, I've rigged a few of these up so I can kind of do it pretty quick and easy. But sometimes you measure, you know, where, where you want the hook point to come out. Um, so one of the tricks when you get the bait to that point, pinch it on the bottom and you actually just sort of snap it just like that. Just sort of snap it and then you can work it around, but see how that's perfectly straight. You want that, that jerk shad to be perfectly straight on the jig head. If it's not, it's going to spin and twirl, not look natural, twist your line up and you're just not going to catch as many fish. And then the other thing, mandatory, a little bit of super glue. I like the Loctite stuff. Those cans last a little bit longer and they don't really get too messy, but just a little bit of glue on there and that's good to go. Until a pike or a toothy critter bites that off, um, I'm gonna be able to catch a pile of fish on it. That shiner, that's always a, a good one for me, just about everywhere we go. So my bait's right here, there's a fish on it. That looks like a big blobby bass, kinda. There's quite a few of them down there near the bottom. I don't know if they just don't like the no wind or what, but we finally tricked one. And uh, it's a single. I just saw a little blob out there, kind of off the bottom. I can see a couple more now, so there's probably a few buddies, but we got one. All right. So, not a giant, but a nice one. There we go. Yeah, on the board. So that one, basically, uh, I had them I, I had them, I saw them come off the bottom on my bait. And, and often when that happens, I mean, it's just a rush up, wham, they get it. That one actually followed it for probably 10 or 15 feet. And uh, you know, you just keep swimming it and it's hard not to like want to jig or move your rod, but I just keep reeling it slow and steady and I just felt a tick. Sort of number one rule I like to follow is, is I always want to, there's a couple sort of a ways out there. You, you always want to keep the bait above the fish. So when you're when you're when you see a fish on the screen, I you know throw my bait out there. You'll see me start reeling it pretty quick. I don't want that bait to fall like right to the same level that the fish are at. It's tempting to want to just like drop it right in their face, but like the more you can make them sort of swim for it and work for it a bit, just seems like the more likely they are to bite it. So it's, that one. Oh. That feels good. Those ones were angry about it. Look at them all. Yeah, that's a better one. Look at the look at the screen. There's probably a school of like 
20 down there maybe. I don't know, there's so many. <laughs> wow. That's a real minnow eater in the north right here. This is what we, this is what we want. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> Look at that. I think that one wanted it. That's a nice big built, you know, northern smallmouth. You know, we don't have gobies up here, so we don't get the giants like you do in the Great Lakes, but, uh, but that's a good one, you know, close to a four pounder probably, and um, sort of the kind that you, that you want to catch. Obviously the ideal situation um, is you're watching Meg alive and you just see a group of fish out in front of you, cast to them, catch them. Got them. That's cool. That's always the best scenario. Right here, I've got a, there's a boulder. So I don't see a fish, you know, just sitting right there on top of it right now. But like a lot of times when you see something different on the bottom, some rock or a clump of grass, whatever it is, it's always worth just throwing a bait next to it, near it. And these small moths, I mean, they can see your bait and know it's there so much better than you think they can. And often you just get get a bait in the neighborhood of those little clusters of rocks or isolated boulders, any of that kind of stuff. So nothing on that one, but a lot of times that's the deal. You don't necessarily just have to cast at fish. You see, sometimes if, if there's a nice bit of rock or something there where a fish could be hiding, like this, here we go, I'm about to get one here. I just fired it up on top of a little high spot, uh, little guy. But you can see the screen right now. You know, I didn't see any fish there, but there was a couple of them just right here on top of that rock. And, uh, you know, so, the, it helps you catch a lot more fish, you know, over the course of the day, just by showing you, you know, that extra little place or two to, to put your bait. We're catching a lot of, you know, kind of average size fish. Um, and this is a good way to catch big ones. I think, you know, if we can get a little bit of wind or maybe we'll go try another sort of section of the lake here pretty soon, but, um, but yeah, a little bit of, I was gonna wash my hands, but Looks like I'm about to get get tapped again here. Oh, missed him. Look at them all up there. So my bait's right here, and then there's a couple fish just kind of cruising along. Sometimes you, even though you glue, that's why you glue that bait on. So when you miss a bite or whatever, most often it's gonna still be, you know, in pretty good shape and fishable. Um, because you definitely want that bait to be be straight. I'll often I can drop it in the water right here and just sort of pull it. And I, if it you know if it just moves nice and straight like that, that that looks good to me. And you know you just definitely don't want them like twirling or spinning, and it'll kind of ruin your line, twist your line all up as well. You know the other thing about fishing these style of baits. I mean it's fun catching them on hard baits and treble hooks and everything. And the perception is that those are, those are the best hooking baits because there's so many hooks, but it's the opposite. You know, anytime you're after these small moths, especially big ones, um, just a, a single hook is, is the best way to get them. You know, you can get them in the top of their mouth and you're not gonna lose very many of them. These smeltinator jigs that I use, um, use them for, you know, they've been, my friend Brian's been making them for about 10 years and they're built on a Gamagatsu 604 hook. So it's sort of your, a little bit heavier gauge, um, stronger wire hooks, and you can kind of get away with using a little bit heavier line as well. So, um, you know, my favorite rod for doing this is a G Loomis NRX 872. So it's a 7.3 kind of medium action rod, fairly soft, but not, you know, it's not a noodle by any means. Um, you, can, you can pull pretty hard. And my general setup is 10 pound Power Pro, a 10 pound leader. Uh, my leader length, usually if I hook my bait up here, I want the knot between the first guide and the reel. So you're gonna have, you know, eight or nine feet of, of, uh, of leader. And I don't like to do too much longer than that, just cause if I can, I'd av I avoid like wanting that knot to actually go up in the spool. And living up here where I do, you're gonna ca you catch too many fish. If you, if you have too long of a leader, just because you think it's gonna last longer, you, you know, usually you're, 
wearing it out by by that time anyway so pretty much um you know you're getting an, i'm putting on a new leader every day that i'm fishing out here if it's a rod that i'm using <laughs> small walleye but that's good we tricked them small victory but that's the cool thing about, you know, using this this kind of bait is everything out here eats bait. Oh, look at, look at, look at, nice musky. Just catching a little bit of everything is fun too. And um, this bait is just really good all around, you know, just multi-species fish catcher. <laughs> you just never know what you're gonna catch here. So one thing I can tell you about living up in this part of the world is you're never gonna starve. You always catch a lot of these all the time. and. That's as good of eating fish as, the, as we have in fresh water. Top of this reef's like seven or eight feet probably. Oh, that thing smoked it. <laughs> Swimming towards me kind of, but I think it's a good one the way it bit. Before forward sonar, Meg Alive, we would go and actually get on top of the rock and drop these baits down. But now we can sort of see the rock and I could see there's some fish hanging around up there, so there we go. It's a long one. He's not super heavy, but that's it. I don't know how many hundreds of fish, thousands of fish I've caught on that setup, you know. Obviously, sort of choose some different colors um, from time to time, but in this water, Cisco's are kind of the primary forage, um, but a lot of the lakes up here that are a little bit clearer and deeper, um, smelter a big player as well so just the bait just does a really phenomenal job of uh, emulating both of those different different species but getting her back out there see if we can get another one <laughs> 